All right, guys, uh, we're back here. We're going to do a recap of game four. Uh, we got a real special guest joining us today to, to chat hockey, one of my all-time favorite teammates. So this guy was uh, the first overall draft choice in 1994 to the Florida Panthers. He is an NHL all-star multiple times, uh, Olympic gold medalist for Canada, played over 1,100 games, currently a member of the Florida Panthers broadcast team. Uh, for home games, kind of pre-game, intermissions, and post-games. But most importantly, one of my favorite all-time best roommates with the Vancouver Canucks, going to welcome Ed Jovanovsky to chat some hockey. Hey, Mo, how are you, Bell? Good, Jovo. Good. Always always great catching up with you, buddy. Always yeah. good catching up with you. You're, uh, you're down in FLA in Florida? I'm in, yeah, I'm in Florida. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, you know, thanks for the beautiful intro, though, too. It was quite nice. Uh, yeah, just, you know, drafted here, stayed here. Kids are all settled here. Um, and like you said, working with working with the Panthers right now, doing their pre-post intermission work um, in the middle of a battle, you know, right now in the playoffs with Tampa ourselves. So, um, yeah, just enjoying yeah. it down here, enjoying the hot weather. It's starting to get a little toasty yeah. down here, but... Yeah, overall everything's good. Starting to get muggy, but you guys, uh, you guys are seemingly what is kind of the hockey hotbed here last few years with with uh, Tampa and their run, and, and obviously Florida here the last couple of years. It's good to see. So uh, it's fun fun to watch those those teams go at it. So let's get into uh, one of our former teams here, the Canucks, and uh, chat about their playoff series with Nashville and and specifically Game Four. So, I mean, what a wild game! I mean, uh, you could describe it as improbable, like unbelievable, all, all these different uh, adjectives. But, I mean, wow. Let's uh, let's go through it here. And I guess let's talk about goaltending off the hop here with uh, Arthur's uh, Shilohs in net. And uh, really caught everybody by surprise. You know, yesterday afternoon, I think everybody had the mindset that Casey DeSmith was lights out in game three, came in for Demko, and all of a sudden get news that, that DeSmith is hurt. But finishes the game, so no real indication that he's hurt. And you have Shelovs coming in, and I saw some stat the other night where he's uh, he tied a Vancouver record for the least amount of experience before his playoff first playoff game. He's played I think nine regular season games before getting a playoff matchup. So what, what's your take on that? Well, nothing better than getting thrown right into the fire, I think, for him. But I, you know, I it's unfortunate with Demko because he's had such a you know Vesna type season. And, you know, Casey the Smith, who's got NHL experience. So for him coming into that situation, I, I think is is cool for him and get that opportunity. But I think now you you lose your top two guys and now you go into, a, you know, with, with their so-called third goaltender. But I don't, there's not much time really to think, I really think, for, for, for him. I think getting thrown into that situation, you do your best. Um, there wasn't much room out there in that game. So, but he did make some great saves early on, um, you know, for them. And then eventually just kind of shut the door and made some key saves at some key times and, and really kind of gave life for the last three minutes of that hockey game for, for Van to kind of pull it through. But um, it's always a tough situation. You really don't know what to think in those, those moments as players, but for us who we played, I, I think when you look at that, it's like, what changes? You still got to play the game and play the right way. It is the playoffs, so you are going to sacrifice your body. You're going to do your best that, that you can, you know, to really insulate the middle of the ice, take away great scoring opportunities. And, and Van did for the, for the most part of that game. Like I said, there wasn't much room. Made the saves when he needed to. And what a confidence booster for him. I don't know what, you know, moving forward to – you know, in a game five, what things are looking like. They're saying Casey DeSmith possibly was a day-to-day -day injury. He was obviously, you know, the on the bench yesterday. But, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it unfolds. But good on him. Good win for him. It's got to help his confidence and knowing that he can get the job done. Yeah, I mean, huge, huge confidence booster. I think a lot of times when you have changes like that, kind of going through it at times, it galvanizes the team, yeah. right? I mean, 
subconsciously you just kind of you don't want to give up as much i mean you still have confidence and faith in your in your keeper that he can get the job done but it sometimes brings the team closer together and this is this kind of reminds me a little bit of a situation that we were involved with back in uh oh three oh four in the first round against uh, the flames against the calgary flames where we had Klutz, dan cloutier was our starter and Klutz had a great season that year and was playing tremendous hockey at the end of the season but he gets hurt i think i believe it's game three of that series we bring in our backup, Johan Hedberg, the Moose, uh, finishes game three, plays game four. And then for whatever reason, uh, we make a change again to, to Alex Ald, who predominantly played the whole season with the Manitoba Moose and had 11 games of NHL experience. And then he's thrust into game five, six, and seven in our series against the Flames. Sometimes Crow did things that, you know, you know, coaches sometimes have a, have a feeling. You never know why, you know, they have that thought process of going in. But, again, I, you know, I, this was a while ago, so you're trying to recall on everything that went down. Um, I think it's an opportunity, obviously, for Aldi to, to get in there. But I, I don't think for – I think for us as players, like I said earlier, you look at that whole situation, you still got to play the game. And you go out there and you battle um, – and you see, basically see if the goaltender can can handle it. I mean, it's not an ideal situation, but I think for for coaches, they have their thought processes on. Did we ever find out why he went with Aldi? You know, I, 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 Bruce is I, such a great guy, and he battles so hard. Um, you know, always the first guy on, last guy off in practice. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes Crow did some things that we never yeah understood, it, but sometimes they overthink it, right? I don't know, like. I mean, the guys on the – nothing against Alex Ald. I'm not putting this on Aldi at all. I mean, he 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 came in and, and, and did a, a good job for us. But I know the guys love the Moose, right? He was right. with us all season long. He had a great playoff run with Pittsburgh previously. I, I, somehow, I don't know if the Moose rubbed Pro the wrong way. I, I I do remember he was late for a bus one time. But that's <laughs> – and yeah. it, that might have irked him a little bit. But – you know, other than that, I don't know. It was a bit of a strange one, but anyways, what do you do? I mean, who's like that fun on the road? Oh, he liked to have a good time. He was a good guy to be around. Yeah, he yeah. was a lot of fun. But anyway, so yeah, we'll we'll move on from that and, and just talk about kind of the goals here in that in the game. So Van gets off to a good start, and uh, which they did in game three, score that first goal because they they gave up an early goal in game one and two, and I think it changes how both teams play. But anyways. I don't know if you remember, but they Vancouver has an offensive zone faceoff, and they execute the faceoff play to perfection, right? They go D to D, they hit a, make a cross ice pass to Miller, and then Bester kind of gets lost on the backdoor side, and Miller makes a terrific backdoor pass, almost an empty net goal, and 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 gets Vancouver buzzing. But you know, as a player, you practice those play or those faceoff plays a lot, but a lot of times you don't get to execute them like that. Well, the centerman. Like in your case, you got to win the face-off, right? That's like step one. You know, you talk about these plays going into it, and if you do win it, yeah, you try to execute it. And there's so many plays, right, Mo, when, you know, the, the forward, the winger goes across the top of the circle, he kind of – and the other winger goes back the other way or you throw it back. There's so many plays that can do, but that that was well executed. And I think what really fooled them is uh, um, Miller is the shooter. You know, so every yeah. time he gets it into those areas, he's got a bomb too. I mean, that wrister is crazy. So him to have, even as we fast forward to the latter part, coming down high there and sliding it down on the, uh, what's it, the second goal? To Lindholm, uh, yeah. Right, you're thinking that he's shooting that puck. You know, so yeah, it's a well-executed play. Um, you know, they got some dangerous weapons up front, that's for sure. Um, but what boggles me is they were so stifled during that game and just finding a way to kind of open things up. Yeah, you have the extra attacker out there, and or this is going back to the second and third goal. But, yeah, it was a well-executed first goal. Um, they have a lot of weapons, a lot of threats in that offensive zone, and when things are executed well, you're going to get that puck to the net. Yeah, they got high high-end offensive talent for sure. So Nashville battles back. They get that kind of four-on-four four goal. I, I thought two weak penalty calls, one on Forsberg. I mean, that interference in front of the net, he leans on Myers and he falls down. I mean, that you can't call that in the playoffs. And then Lindholm's interference off the faceoff, to me, was a makeup call. Anyways, we go four-on-four four and and 
you know, a bit of a mistake here, I think, on Pedersen, over back checking, right? Leaving this point, he can kind of he kind of collapses down into the corner, and all of a sudden they go up top, D to D. Next thing you know, shot deflection, we're we're one one, and um, you know, yeah, the form about that on TNT as well, they're busting that down, you know, where Pedersen has got to go and be, you know, somewhat looking over, seeing, you know, probably stopping a little bit you know, more in that slot area and not yeah. be too excited to get down there. You know, just kind of reading, you know, the game, reading the situation. Um, doesn't mean anything now. They won. Yeah, hey, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, third goal, I mean, Van tries to tries to score off the rush. Preds transition. Nyquist does a nice job on that two-on-one there. Holds, holds, holds. He makes a great shot, roofs it. Now they're up 2-1. They're buzzing. They're at home. They're not giving up much at all. Let me go into the third, start the third period. And uh, you watch that goal and and uh, another kind of unfortunate circumstance is Horonic blows a wheel. A sniper got him there yeah. at the blue line and allows uh, Nyquist again to walk right in. And then, you know, if you're a Vancouver fan, it's controversial. Oh, did he right. kick it? Did he not kick it? I mean, <laughs> hey, listen, I think it's a good goal. I really do. I mean, you can direct the puck in the net, which is, in my opinion, exactly what Forsberg did. Did he turn his skate and, and direct it into the net? Absolutely. But his skate's still on the ice, and he doesn't really have that kicking forward motion. What What do you think of that? Yeah, I, I think, listen, it was a good goal. I, I, you know, it just – there was no distinct we, – we all know. I mean, I don't want to get up here on the kitchen counter and show you my kicking motion. You know, <laughs> I, I think when, you, when you're get, going to the net hard like that, I mean, turning your skate is what it is. I mean, uh, it was a good goal. and But, yeah, it was a nothing play. You're right. It was a nothing uh, play. A sniper got Heronic, you know, coming back. An unfortunate play just kind of makes it an odd man rush in that situation and, um, you know, throws it across and, you know, is what it is. It's, a, you know, 3-1 game. But going back to the, to the second goal, short side roof, Really, you look at Shilos, not, not that you can really do there. I mean, it was an excellent shot. And Nyquist has been really good, you know, yeah, for yeah. them. So, yeah, you find yourself after that early on. You don't want, like, you're 2-1 now. You're going into the third period. You're, you're feeling, hey, listen, guys, we've got to win a period. You know, so scoring early in that, we know as players how that can be so deflating. Yeah. Especially back when we were playing, 3-1 in the third period, might as well go to the showers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Like, and, and just going to the regular season, I mean, teams are down 3 4 nothing, and, and they find a way to come back and win. The NHL landscape has changed for the better. I mean, I love the offense. I love the skill. love the speed. Um, but you're never out of it. And Vancouver, resilient yesterday, just proved, you know, you can battle back. It's never over until the buzzer goes. So, Yeah, I mean uh... – I think the word you used, talk it used it to a resilient group. I mean, honestly, when it was 3-1 and and Nashville was playing a pretty stifling style, which they did in game three as well. The I mean, they gave up 12 shots. It's incredible. I mean, yeah. Nashville's mindset right now, they must be thinking, what do we have to do to win the game, Both. right? Like, Both. I mean, what do we have to do? So, I, so we, we fast forward here and all of a sudden the clock's ticking away. And uh, I always find it interesting nowadays is when teams elect to pull their goaltenders, right? Like when we played, it was last minute of the game, last maybe a minute, 20 seconds. But now, and I think this kind of started with Patrick Waugh before he got this job with the Islanders when he was with the Avalanche seven, eight years ago. He was pulling the goalie three, four minutes left in the game. And, and, and at first, everybody was like, what, what is he doing? Has he lost his mind? Now you see it, a lot of guys doing it, like – you get well, puck possession in the offensive zone, right? Right. I, I, especially being down two, right, Mo? I, I think – I don't know exact time. What, when was it when they pulled the goalie? I think it was around three minutes, roughly. Right. So you think of it, two goals. You, I mean, you need to make a move at some point, especially the playoffs. And prior to that, like you were saying, so stifling, Van couldn't get through the neutral zone. Yeah. I mean, uh, Nashville was regrouping – starting their transition just inside their own blue line every time. They couldn't even get the puck in the dump because their you know, neutral zone was good. The forecheck was good. and But now, yeah, you have to try something. And, and you're right. You're seeing it more and more. You're seeing five, six-minute mark. Guys are pulling the you know, goaltender. 
um, offensive zone faceoff. You have your 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 horses out there. Um, I think I heard somewhere that it's the analytics tell you that. You know, right. there's, some, there's some numbers on it now that I'm not a big analytics guy, but I guess everyone is is doing it in every sport. So there's got to be some truth to it. Yeah, I mean, analytics is a huge part of the game now. I mean, more so than, than when we played. But there's also you got to have a gut feel, right? You got to you got to see right. what guys are doing on face-offs, what the matchups are, how your team's snapping the puck around. But obviously for Vancouver, I mean, geez, I mean, they're not going to apologize for this one. But a great, great execution on the first one. Like we talked about a bit earlier, uh, Miller throwing that puck down to Lindholm, back door to Besser. Just takes his time with that puck, right? A lot of guys might panic and shoot it into the pad, but he gets it up, roofs it. Um, Soros did touch it with his pad, yeah. almost made that scorpion save, which would have been save of the year maybe, but uh, aside from Bobrovsky's the other night. Right. So anyways, we're tied. We're 3-2. And I can't remember – do you, when Sissons came down the wall, was that when it was 3-1 or 3-2 when he had that backhand open net and he hit the post? Like, the game's over. The game's three over. Three right, three. right. Like, we're talking – that's the that's the definition of the game of inches, right? That that thing goes in the net. The game, the series is tied. Hits the post. Vancouver transitions. Uh, comes up the ice. And, again, great execution. But what a phenomenal goal by Besser. How to – that, getting that puck below the goal line instead of panicking and just throwing it back out on his backhand, backhand, forehand, buries it. I mean, he he was – that was a statement game from him last night. It, yeah, it was unbelievable. And you almost think that he was going to bury the first one. You know, just got a little bit ahead of him and, um, you know, the goalie being stretched out. But good on him to stay with it because typically you bring that back in, you're getting smoked in that area. There's always someone in that area. You know, coverage went, you know, haywire in that situation. And everyone's scrambling and just stay with it and grind it and get to that area and, and, and bury it. But, you know, overall, I mean, it was just – you almost can sense it, too, that it was coming. Right after Sisdens missed that, you're like, oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. boy. The first thing that comes into your mind, yeah. oh, man. Uh, right? You know, you know what? We're going to look back at this, and it's going to haunt us. Yeah. And seen I, seen that movie before, right? <laughs> right. So – um yeah, he was a beast in that game, and um, you know, Besser is obviously a shooter and a scorer. Yeah. And, um, so it was good to see, you know, the excitement. Even Garland, they, I mean, they were tr- talking about trading this guy at the start of the year. He wasn't fitting in. Yeah. What the confidence talk has in him? He's out in every key situation now, and good on him. He's not the biggest guy, but boy, he gets in there, and uh, you know, he works. And he was a big part of that game yesterday. Well, he's got a great engine, right? Like he's, his right. Feet, are, feet are always moving. Like you said, he's him and uh, the door off kind of in front of the net there at the end. And then we go into overtime and, and a lot of times you kind of settle in, at, you know, you score a big goal like that. And the message in the room is, Hey boys, we don't need to win it here in the first minute. Be prepared, you know, do all the right things for a long period of time. And we'll wait for our opportunity and take advantage. Well, <laughs> just over a minute in, what a play, right, by that third line. Let's call it the third line with uh, Joshua and, and and Garland making a phenomenal yeah. pass out front. And Lindholm, their big acquisition, who's taken some heat in Vancouver. But I had a chance to see him play in Calgary quite a bit. And you could argue that he was on the top line in hockey two years ago with Johnny Goudreau and, and Kachuk, who's now right. in, in Florida. I mean, those guys were on fire. And, I mean, he scored 42 last year, and he was runner-up for the Selkie. I mean, this guy is a 200-foot player. But what a huge goal to end that right away. Yeah, and, and just going into that intermission, right? If you're you're in Nashville's side, you're like, uh, they're, they're, we're in trouble. Like just the most, <laughs> like you're so def, you're so deflated. And as much as you say, yeah, you know, everyone's gonna tell you yeah, the confidence we're in our building. You know, listen, we just pissed this one away. Let's go get it in overtime. Well, I I mean the morale is down. I don't care what you say, but it is the playoffs. You got to find it. You know, to to find a way to really come through. And, um, but there wasn't much time. I mean, you look at, you know, how that play was executed. I'm not really sure. I love Luke Shen. I think it's a great, I mean, the guy plays hard. I'm not sure why he left net front. Yeah. Yeah. I I was thinking that too. Behind the goal line, right hand shot, Garland. I I, I don't know. I mean, it's tough play. We know 
you know, me as a defenseman, sometimes you react and you think you can get there. But it was such a heads-up play by Garland to move the puck quick. I think if Luke Shen stays still in front of the net there, it's a nothing play. I mean, you just let things settle down. But all in all, listen, Lindholm is a cerebral player. You know, we have, you know, a guy like Reinhardt here in, in Florida thinks the game well. Barkov, 200-foot player. It's always tough going to a different situation. And Vancouver media is not the easiest. And, you know, it gives, gives the time for, for a player. But, hey, you want him producing now, you know, this time of year. And he's done that. He's been excellent this series. Yeah, he scored a couple big goals, but even a couple assists on the tying goal there or, or the third, the second goal, sorry. But last game, too, big face-off win when, when they tied the game, and he's a great right. face-off guy. And he's he's like a glue guy, right? He's a guy – he's kind of like reminds me a little bit of like a Yerry Lettinen, right, in Dallas. Right. He, can do, he, did, he makes the right decision all the time. He's not a very he big a, guy, is he? He's not a big guy. He's probably my size, so he's not very big at all. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, such a smart player, and uh, you can put him out in any situation. And they made an adjustment there. They they actually, uh, after game two, they moved him onto the top power play and took Garland off. And sometimes, sometimes you know, nothing against Garland because he's been phenomenal this season. But sometimes just having a new look on there kind of re-energizes, right, the guys, and you have a fresh look. And he's played on the top unit in Calgary for a lot of years. So I think that adjustment's helped as well. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, Van's going home 3-1. I mean, uh, the reality is they could easily be down 3-1, but they're up. That's all that matters. They're not going to apologize for going into Nashville and stealing two games. And and now, uh, you know, regroup. And, and I think the mindset moving forward has to be, that having that killer instinct, right? Don't rest on the fact that, hey, we have a game or two that, you know, we 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 have some breathing room here, right? Because you know, if you give anybody momentum in a series, things can change like that. So, you know, they got to put the pedal down here and try and finish things off at home. We know something about that. I still have nightmares. Oh, <laughs> I still have nightmares against I, Minnesota. I keep, back to, I keep going back to that series because you kind of just go through that mini series. And now you're playing Anaheim, which we beat four times that year. You know, not saying that we can get through a seven-game series with them, but, you know, I like our chances. But anyway, listen, I mean, you know, Mo, you dealt with a year or two in Florida, an opportunity to kind of sweep the other night. The fourth one is always the toughest game to win. The emotions are going to be high. That building will be a jungle. I mean, we're seeing the clips of we know how loud that fans are passionate. They'll be excited. You don't want to get too excited, get out of position, you know, taking penalties early on. You know, Nashville's a well-coached team. Uh, they have pride. They'll come on and, and, and play hard. But you have an opportunity here to end it at home, get some rest, you know, not travel back to, to, to Nashville. So, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, things in this situation that play in. Um but overall, I think they deserve it. Listen, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I think Van is obviously a better team, and they've played hard, and, and they have an opportunity to close it out here. I apologize, my dog in the background. But it, it, that's just life. That's life. We, we all have pets. We all know what goes, what happens. Uh, he's excited. He liked your take there. Uh, but I agree with you, man. Game four is the toughest to win. I, I was actually lucky enough to go back to Van for game two, although they lost that game. But it was a different perspective sitting up in the stands. Like you, you see it now in, in Florida as a player, you're so focused on what you have to do. You're downstairs. You're kind of in your own little zone, right? You got your blinders on getting ready. But when you are able to sit up in the stands and take that all in and what it means to people and the magnitude of the game and, and, and the energy in the building, like I, I was blown away by it. Like I was absolutely, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, well, I just <clears throat> just playing there. Obviously, we know what the playoffs are about um, and how passionate the fans are. I mean, they eat, sleep, breathe hockey there, so it's awesome to see. Um, yeah, the playoffs are a different animal, you know, especially in those Canadian markets. Are you kidding me? I mean, having playoff success, walking around that town, it, it's pretty cool, and um, it seems like a, a great group of guys. They're growing together, led by a great captain and. And, uh, and Quinn, who's uh, taking his lumps this series, you know. But I think that's all in the maturity phase for, 
you know, for defensemen, it's always a game plan of Nashville, I bet. Chip it in his corner and let him have it every time. You see his last game, his minutes were down. Uh, there'll be some adjustments. He'll be at home. But, yeah, overall, um, that city, when the team's going, it's fun. Yeah, no, no question. And you know what? It's funny you kind of – alluded to Hughes. I was going to ask you specifically about him. You know a thing or two about defense, but uh, in my opinion, games one and two, he was head and shoulders above everybody else. Best player on the ice. Played fine game three and four, but like you said, in Nashville, they not that they're targeting him, but the message is every time you're around this guy, finish on him, right? right. Take away his time and space, finish, because his edge work and his ability to escape and and, and get out of trouble is if not the best in the league, I think it's him and McCarr or one, two at doing that. But, you know, he, he did look, he was wincing a couple times there last night. He got sandwiched yeah, there yeah, on the yeah. bench. Yeah, man. And you know, like as a D man, right? Like these guys are dumping the puck in your corner. I mean, that's not a good feeling, right? I, I, when, when guys are laying pucks in your corner and I know you like to play physical and, and, um, and finish your checks, but what's the mindset of a D man when guys are constantly laying pucks in your corner and you know, you're going to get ran. Well, I think I think is get on your horse and get back there as quick as you can, which he does, and just that little split second could be, you know, an opportunity to make a tape to tape pass rather than kind of this hammer it around the boards. Uh, but I, I think Nashville is that kind of grinding team, and I, obviously the message was sent. You know, if you don't hit this guy, I mean, he's going to kill you. And, th and that's yeah. basically what has happened, um, you know, just kind of freewheeling out of the zone. And I, I think the message was clearly sent from from Bruno to his team. Hey, listen, guys, we got a chance every time we can, you know, don't take stupid penalties and don't get yourself out of position because he's that good where he can elude you in those situations. But, you know, every player faces it. I mean, I, I remember, you know, obviously my D partners, Merrick Malik and Scott LaChance, I always asked them, I said, why don't they dump it in your corner? Why is the puck, <laughs> why is the puck always coming in my corner? You know? Yeah. But it's, um, listen, he's he's that good, right, Mo? Him and Makar, we got a different planet, you know, so. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, special guys to watch. To watch. Definitely, spe yeah, he's fun to watch. All right, bud. Well, let's uh, – Appreciate the insight. Let's let's go through a couple questions here. We got a bunch of people writing some things, and we'll pick a handful and them, and then uh, I know you got to head to the rink here to uh, to do some uh, some homework for the game tonight. But now I, I love the fact that you had your readers on early because I can't yeah. see anything on my computer anymore. So I got to put these on to read these, a couple questions. <laughs> That's what happens, buddy. Hey, when you get yeah. old. Oh man! All right, let's see here. Okay, well, one of these questions, something we were just talking about, with Nashville going after Hughes, is it wise for one of his teammates to stand up for him and take a penalty? It seems like Van can't afford to have any player take a major. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's, I mean, there's, there's a right time to do it. I, I think they're clean hockey plays, right? I mean, it doesn't, if they're a captain, it, it doesn't matter who it is. I think if the, Nashville's doing their job, they're going in there, they're being hard on, uh, hard on Quinn. Um, I, I think for Quinn, it's, it, this is something that, as players, you grow from, and you'll make adjustments to figure it out. There's always a time and place if something gets out of hand, you know, to take care of business. I think right now you're worried about winning hockey games. Uh, like, like the question came in. I mean, you don't want to take a stupid penalty or retaliatory penalty. He's he's a big boy. He can he can handle the heat of the game. Now, there the message can be sent by winning hockey games and just you know you want to yeah. keep guys on the ice. I mean, you got to take it this time of year. You get, you got to take yeah. some bumps, right? Yep. Yep. It's just it's what it is. I mean, you don't want to see guys taking liberties on your best players, so you go in and get into scrums, right. but you it's, you can't take a penalty. Although Vancouver's. Penalty kill has been perfect this series. You don't want to give the national guys any 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 uh, any life. All right, another one here for uh, what are your thoughts on the Patterson hit during the Preds goal celebration? <laughs> Did you see that he kind of got caught in the wrong spot at the wrong time? He got absolutely buckled I did, in that I celebration. You didn't see it. Oh, so 
Fred score, he goes into the, if you're, the goalie's looking out the right-hand corner, and he kind of gets caught right in the middle of the celebration. And Joe Lozon comes in, gives him a forearm right to the chest, buckles him, he lands on his back, and all the guys are basically standing over him. But the thing that I noticed in that is all the Predators fans are right above him on the glass, just giving him this one. Oh, this, is, this is on the tying goal? Uh, no, this was on, yeah, the first goal, the first goal, the tying goal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I, I was actually laughing. I mean, just wrong, bad, wrong place, right. wrong time, right? And and, yeah. and on Nationals' part, it's like, you know, you're at that moment. You're almost a little bit of a poor loser, you know, at that <laughs> moment. So the closest thing near you, uh, just give him a whack. And, you know, after you score a big goal, you got this huge, like, adrenaline endorphin high. You don't even know what you're doing, right? You're just like, get in there with the boys and celebrate. Oh, this guy's in the way. I'm going to forearm shiver him. Well, we saw that, too, in the Ranger game the other day after yeah. the Rangers Trocek scored. You see Fox going in because they score on the power play where – Yeah. Looking at that, that was, a, that was a pretty good knee there, kind of getting on Fox when he went around. Um, I don't know who it was. But, anyway, after, after Trocek scored – Fox is skating in and then said something. Wilson wired. Wilson just had locked him in. I'm like, you know, so I don't know what was said in that situation. Um, but yeah, emotions get high. And especially after you score like that, just uh, just kind of yeah. whack someone close to you. <laughs> You're wired. All right, buddy, a couple more. Uh, so, uh, for, question for Joel, but what do you think, what do you see, sorry, from this Canucks team that reminds you of your years as a Canuck? Well, I, I mean, this is scoring. Obviously, the, the work that your line did, and you, you look at, you look at the offense that this team has, um, it's fun to watch. But I think the work ethic, too, you know, we had a pretty balanced lineup. And I, I think, uh, you know, Patrick's done a great job with, with this group assembling. And I think Talk has had a lot to say in that because Talk was that player, right? It's either work or you're not going to play. And I think that's the mentality that we had, you know, as, as a team. Um, but it's yeah, just a fun team to be around. They seem like we were a really close group. And it seems like this group is very tight-knit. And... Um, and you need that. And the guys, a group. I mean, we see it down here in Florida. A lot of the core guys have been together, and we were together for a, for a long time. So that group is living that right now. So it becomes tighter as a group. And um, I say those similarities. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. I mean, we had the ability to score goals, right? We had, uh, you know, we had good good defense. We had a good team, man. You look back at it, it's right. just. Uh, unfortunately, we lose to Colorado, won the cup. Lose to Detroit, win the cup. We lose to Calgary, go to the cup finals. We lose to Anaheim, they win the cup. Right. It's not like we beat guys, lost to guys that went out the next round, right? These right. are all good, legitimate Hall of Fame teams. Right. But anyways, that's not a whole other story. <laughs> right. All right, two two more, buddy, for you. Two more, we'll let you go. Um, let's see here. Okay, as a player, how do you tailor your approach to counteract the opposing team's key players in a long series? Well, I mean, the matchups are a huge thing, right? And, and uh, you know, whether at home or you're on the road, right? We see that game going all at home, obviously, last change. You take care of the matchups. Uh, I, I think for if you're, if you're a defenseman and you're just say, you know, I'm playing and we're playing against, you know, the Avalanche and you're dealing with McKinnon. You know, I, I think in those situations, you need five guys. There's not so much just the kind of the back end. You need that back pressure from, from the forwards to have the ability to try to nullify things early on. Once you let them go in the offensive zone, it's, it, it could be trouble because they're so dangerous and, and, and they're very creative offensively. Um, you just got to be hard on them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You hear this not only from me, you hear this from everyone. It's time and space in the in the playoffs. These top players don't like to be crunched in, into those areas where they don't have much room to move. Um, but it all comes down to work. You want to outwork the guy next to you. You want to win those 50-50 battles. Um, but overall, you see a lot of guys, uh, a lot of coaches talk about, about their team after big games. And... It all comes down to work ethic and playing smart and puck management and, and things like that. And that goes a long way. 
right? And I think just to add to that, it's just kind of the mindset, right? I mean, not everything's going to go your way all the time. So no. how quickly can you reset? You know, if you go to the bench, say you get scored on or, or you, you make a play that maybe wasn't a great play, like you can't hang your head. You got to reset right away and focus on your next shift, right? So yeah. have that short, short-term memory loss, right? Yeah, the, the amnesia. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's not, it's not always great. Obviously, you know, it's, it's human nature. You make a glaring mistake or you miss an assignment, you go to the bench, you feel like crap, you know, it's a big game and, and you let your, you feel like you let your team down. There's no, there's no point on kind of just worrying about what happened. I think going out there and, 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 and getting out there and doing the right thing and, that's the that's the mindset of the pro athlete, right? I mean, you don't yeah. want to do something that's going to hurt, you know, you or your or your team in those situations. But you will get the opportunity to go back out there and just do your best not to make the right play this time. Right, and have your teammates pick you up. Right, is a huge thing having good teammates. Yeah. All right, buddy. Last one here for you. Um, What's the main what's a, what's a main memory that comes back to you when you think back on each other as teammates? Hmm. I, that's, a, that's a tough one. I, I yeah. like I think one thing. I mean, we we developed a great friendship in Van. We played there for a lot of years together, and and you become really close with your roommate, right? At that time before the lockout there and it changed where if you played 10 years or 500 games in the league, you got your own room, but you know, that was nice, but I, I really um, appreciated the times when you had a roommate, you kind of had a lot of fun together. You grew up together. You kind of took care of each other's backs. I mean, there's so many things that we could talk about that the things that we can't talk about, <laughs> but, uh, but I think for, for, for me, Joel, well, just you, I always appreciated what you brought to the rink every every night or every day in practice i mean you had an intensity that really electrified the group right you were you were an emotional player but a guy that would do absolutely anything for the guy beside him and and help your team win a game i mean you had a rare combination of of an edge but a a, a gifted offensive ability right you would quarterback the power play in vancouver but I mean, you could kill penalties, block shots. You could match up against other teams' top guys. And I think you you were intimidating to play against. I mean, you could skate. But I just – I mean, all those things are intangibles. But just your mindset coming to the rink every day, it was a lot of fun to be around. And, and I know guys fed off of your energy and, and your passion. So that – and, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's I what I appreciate, that. man. Yeah, no, I, I think – I think, Mo, I, I don't think I know that – if I didn't have that, I was, you know, average in a lot of situations. You know, I, I think the passion for the game was always, I took losses hard. I, I mean, we all hate losing, right? And, and you want to do well and you want to, you want to produce. And I think in Vancouver, what I loved about playing in Vancouver was you're always on your toes. You're afraid of getting beaten down by Ian McIntyre <laughs> and Ben Kuzma. <laughs> You know, um, yeah. So I mean, you had to bring that to the ring, but you know, just going around around the room, all, you know, all the guys, we, we had a good time. We had a good time, and we put the work in, and it was a fun. It was a fire fun environment when things were going well. Yeah, we got to grow up together. Really, at the yeah. same age, a lot of guys, which was cool. Yeah. So. All right, buddy. Well, I, I appreciate your time doing this. I know uh, you got to head off to the rink and, and you're a busy guy. You got a lot of demands on your time with family and other requests. But uh, I, I know like this is such this channel is really in its infancy for, for me and something completely out of the norm. I never thought I'd be doing this, but kind of having fun with it keeps you engaged in the game and get to catch up with great guys like yourself. So anybody listening, uh, we appreciate it. Hit, hit subscribe. Like I said, we're new to this. We're having fun with it. Uh, fortunate to have a phenomenal guy on here today and uh, appreciate all the insight, pal. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, buddy. And anytime. I, I, I think one of your guests that you should try to get is our old GM. That'd be a good one. Oh, Berkey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh Berkey. He just wants to get on here and tell the arbitration story about the elephant and the mouse. <laughs> yep. Oh man. Yep. Yeah, he'd be good. He'd be yeah. good for sure. He, there's no gray area. It's black and white. Right. But yeah, oh, thanks for having me on. Good luck. And um, 
I guess good luck to the uh, Canucks in game five. Thanks, buddy. All right, we appreciate it. All right, guys. Take care.